All right. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's seminar on the development of religious thought in prehistory. Uh, my name is Botan Yildiz, and I'm a researcher with the Kadit Research Group, uh, focusing on the comparative history of religions. As you know, this semester we are examining topics of religion and belief in a vast area extending from prehistory to ancient Sumer and ancient Egypt. Um, I'm honored to introduce our esteemed guest speaker tonight from University of Liege, uh, Professor Marcel uh, Ott. Please excuse my pronunciation, Professor. That's all right. <laughs> Professor Ott is an expert in um, in European, Near Eastern, Central Asian, I mean, uh, all the places that we have the prehistoric uh, evidences. Professor Ott works on religion, art, and social structures, especially during the Upper Paleolithic period offers invaluable insights into the origin of human belief systems. Religious thought is a fundamental aspect of human experience, and understanding its roots can shed light on our cultural evolution. In our previous seminar, we hosted a guest speaker on beliefs in the Neolithic period. Tonight, we have a guest who can take us even further back to Mesolithic, to Paleolithic, and maybe uh, to the days when Homo sapiens coexisted with the Neanderthals, having very similar industries in some regions of the world. So Professor Ott will guide us through the fascinating world of prehistoric societies, exploring the emergence and development of religious ideas during that period. Um, Professor, the stage is yours. We are all eager to learn from your expertise. Mm -hmm. Thank you for introducing. I'm very happy to be with you because I love Turkey and the Turkish people. I've been working there many times and uh, and also in Iran. But uh, as you said, <clears throat> my own concern is about the spiritual aspect of, of prehistory. And uh, I think you should not speak so much about uh, religion, but uh, symbolism or mythologies because religion suppose that you have a God and there is a relation between God and man. So <clears throat> probably uh, there was no God uh, in the before Neolithic, as my thought. And anyway, we have a, uh, I have this first slide, which is prehistory, but recent prehistory. It is eighth century before Christ. It's coming from uh, Spain and Dama del Elke. And uh, I take this uh, example because we have, we have no text, nothing. We just have pictures like that. And you all already feel the thinking of the, of the lady and this uh, sensibility just by the stone. And uh, I think the, the kind of stone is also uh, a, a communication of spiritual things. So just, just stones. Uh, speak about sensibility and religions. Here you have the very beginning, as you probably all know, <clears throat> the, we have at least a past beginning with three or four million years uh, in, in Africa, and some uh, are very old also in, uh, in Georgia um, and in China. But here this is the main point I want to stress that the uh, our species, beginning probably at 10 million years, uh, is standing. We all stand, and uh, it has been proven by the traces to the right part of your screen with the uh, people walking, and we just have the, the feet there, and in literally at uh, 3 million years in Tanzania. And so this is a very important aspect because when you are standing, you, you look before you, you look, you look behind you. So it creates a relationship with the, the landscape and it, 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 um, it trigger a reflection of one's, oneself in the landscape that no other primate can have. So we can also walk in areas completely open, like the steppic uh, region. So we have to understand our situation already there and three millions. Uh -oh, yes. <laughs> and here we have the skull, of course, you know, of Australopithecus. Uh, it's important to note that as soon as we are standing, the, the skull 
is uh, bigger, uh, bigger and bigger. Uh, just, it's just a question of intelligence, I think. It's just a question of bi biomechanic, because to, to keep the, the skull upright, we need to have uh, like, a, like a sphere, like a ball, to, to uh, make it rounder and, uh, than the before. So it's a biomechanical neo -mechanical, uh, process which allows uh, this brain to be more, uh, to expand, but, but it's not the real, the first uh, um, process. And the other side of the slide, you see there, the uh, chopper tools, as you all know, but which is very important because it's uh, the, the, the hands of humans are, are free. They don't need to uh, use to be used for the walking. So as they are free, they can handle uh, uh, different kind of things, especially the, the stones like that, and they create something that more important than the hands themselves. Oh, please come come back if you can. Uh, going too fast. It's important to have tools because the tools change the environment completely. And uh, and they are there is some uh, grammar in the tools. And here you have the development of the brain cast. I stress that it's not the brain. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> but uh, here you can have a grammar. Each uh, flakes uh, coming from the uh, pebble has exactly the same situation in uh, every tools of this of this period. So I think this is already uh, a way of speech because we have a, a grammar, a concept and grammar. So coming from the standing point, as you have here, you, you have the, the, free, the free arms and hands, so that they create a new relationship <coughs> with the environment. And also they create new um, tools. And the tools are extraction from the hands to the paddle. Yes, we can go on. Uh, so that is the beginning of the thinking. Uh, uh, can you? Ah, uh, yes. Here you see that there is an, a disposition of the the scales on the on the pebble that creates such such a language uh, on the stones. And I think from this point on, you really have languages uh, because for the for uh, recording these different uh, phases of working, you need to have concepts, and the concepts are uh, con uh, diffused by the, by the language. Of course, not the same language that we use today, but a, same, a language which is enough for this period. Yes? Uh, and the next <laughs> well, and so we, we, we can see here the enlargement of the skull, enlargement of, of the bone part of the skull, as you can see very clearly on the on the uh, left part. So as I say, it's not very important for the brain because we don't have a clear relationship between the brain size and the, and the skull. This, of course, the skull can be uh, um, a box for many different kind of uh, brain. So we have not to confuse the brain size and the skull size. Okay, and I take to the right part of the slide. We have the here the only uh, skull, and which have been repeatedly uh, take, taken alone, not. Uh, not the whole brain, but we see, for instance, in Southeast Asia and in China, at this period between one million and two million, they keep only the skull. And they're very important because, as you know, the skull is always a, a, a seat for understanding and of personality. So it's already a path to the religion behavior, keeping the skull, even today. And here you have the fire. Uh, I take an ethnographic uh, uh, example, but the fire is very important because it appears somewhere in, in Africa at 1 million point four. Uh, so it gives power and completely different power than any animal, any other animal. And, and this is a, 
uh, from our point of view, it's a seed of metaphysic, because at that time, humanity have the power to change the mind, to change the world around him, and uh, to create the heat, of course, and the light, but they have, that from that time on, they, they are sure that they, they are able to change their world and to change the animal's behavior by the, the the animals are afraid by fire, but the human are creating fire. That's a, that gives a sense of power that uh, that never happened before. Yes. And another important thing is, of course, you know the biofaces to the to the right, and uh, these biofaces, by the way, are very numerous in the eastern part of Turkey, coming from. From Africa. I don't trust the Africa theory, but for the um, Achillean biophysis, yes, it seems to come from, from uh, Africa, around the Lebanon. But as you know, this uh, stop to the western part of Turkey, of Anatolia. So it's really a diffusion of culture, uh, of idea. And then so I take this uh, Michelangelo sculpture as a comparison, because exactly like in biophysis, you see they are creating a shape, a shape that do not exist before. So they're creating a shape that are just human, only human. So just another way of, of being very powerful. And in Africa, they're coming in 1.5, uh, but in Europe, only about 600,000. And probably in, uh, in Turkey, it was as old. But anyway, it's actually like Michelangelo created this picture from a, a, a block, a stone block, which, which has no shape before. It gives shape to to the nature. Exactly that with the, the bifaces, so such a lot. And as you know, that these bifaces are repeated in exactly the same shape during hundreds of thousand years. Yes? Well, it's very interesting because here in Atapuerca, a very old uh, burial in, in Spain, you see that uh, the, there are many uh, young guys, about 30, uh, about 30 young guys who have been uh, thrown in a cave <clears throat> and they were killed, of course. And uh, this is about uh, 40, 40, 40, 30, 40 uh, tree. Uh, hundreds of years, th hundreds thousand years, and uh, you see you, you, uh, part of the burial, and th there is a, a biface. The biface you can see on the right part of the screen is the only object, no other bone, no other lithic, only one biface, and, and a very pretty one. You see with colors, in the in the, so it shows that the biface is not only a but it's also a symbol, I don't know which kind of symbol, but clearly associated with the death, with the, the dead people which are associated there. Yes? Uh, another point very interesting, and as you could, uh, of course, you know that after Erectus <coughs> in Europe, we have the Neanderthal population. I don't speak about species. For me, the whole humanity is one species, but, but we have population, different population. And so what you have in Neanderthal on the left part of the screen, also in the right part of the screen, but there you can see that it has been broken and uh, cut by uh, the stone and burnt. You know, the frontal bone is also burnt. And so, it show exactly the same traces done in the cannibalism nowadays in, uh, in every part of the world. So, so not only they keep the skull, but they eat the skull, they eat the brain, and they cook it because it's burnt. So it's very important because this anthropophagic uh, uh, behavior uh, exists everywhere in the world, in the exact, uh, in the very foreign part of the world, and which is it's not for for the food, but for the spirit. They take the, uh, the mind of the people to keep its spirit, uh, as if they, they have a, a burial 
in, in host in themselves because they they, they bury the, the people and they eat them so they are, it's a clear uh, proof of a metaphysic already yes and i took this, this example as you know in christianity uh, we eat uh, the, the the rest of the of the priest exactly like uh, in Neanderthal, this is Monte Gattari near Rome in Italy when you see that the occipital uh, hole has been enlarged in order to eat the, the brain exactly like we do in uh, in uh, Christian religion where we eat the body of the Christ itself and we drink its uh, blood on the, in the calis to the, in the center of this. So it, uh, this anthropophagy is going uh, to the uh, to the God itself, which is himself, which is uh, eaten by by the people who are, yes? Mm. Uh, another point is uh, the way <coughs> the drama you know, is written in, in French, but you can understand that it's kind of a grammar. When you don't take the biface as a block, but you take the flakes which are taken off uh, the block, and you, you can see you have a very um, intelligent way of working. That's what we call the valois, of course. During uh, hundreds of years, they use the valois, which create a clear relationship between the mind of the people and the the, the the product the flakes uh, that they produce because they determine the, the shape of the flake before it has been knelt. I have just told them. Okay, and you see to the left part of the screen that there are also handles. This is from Bildungsleben in central Germany, and uh, you see that the handle is made by the by the resin of of pine trees and so it has been burnt and they, they keep the handle intact with the revoir points so we show that you have different kind of gesture which can be uh, obtained either by the flag itself or by the flag inside the handle it is very intelligent as a technique Oh, yes, yes, next one. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love this because in Europe, in the whole European continent, you have very different kind of styles. So it's not techniques, it's just a way of creating the same tools. On the, the functions are the same, but the way they do is completely different. That, that show that uh, in different part of Europe, you have traditions. Tradition meaning that they uh, create the same kind of tools across the time, and they also distinguish themselves from the other people from another another region. Because these kind of tools are repeated with the, between during hundreds of of thousand years without changing. So they they have a, a, a relation with the mind of the people with the identity of the people and you also have to the very left some uh, fossil shells which is very different because they they create a, a special relationship which a shell which was living and a stone that they they became like that but they keep this kind of transformation in their own uh, dwelling places yeah Yes, this is also very important. Uh, again, in uh, Neanderthal, <clears throat> as you know, the, the, some part of the animals are kept uh, um, completely with the, with the horns, like a, a Bukta or Orok, and they, they are kept all together. So, there, of course, there is a symbolic uh, idea about it. So they keep the animals with the more the most representative of their body, which are the horns, uh, all the antlers, and they are kept together uh, together in part of the of the cave. This is Grimaldi cave in the south of uh, France. 
<coughs> and uh, the other part, then you have a fruit, uh, a fruit made on bone, an, <coughs> um, an empty bone, and which has been perforated in four holes on that side and uh, on one hole on the other side. So, so exactly like the numbers of fingers we have in order to make music. So it, we, all, we already have not, not only animal symbolic, the anthropomorphic and uh, the anthropophagist and the musical instrument already during Neanderthal uh, times. I think it is a very long and very important period of the humanity. Uh, yes, because uh, yes, you also know, of course, in um, in Muslim time in in Israel, you have <coughs> the Kebara cave when you have the jaw to the right part of the screen. You have the jaw, <coughs> not the lower part of the mandible, but you don't have the skull. <coughs> but the skull was there because we have one teeth of the upper jaw which has been left. So <coughs> the, this, this burial has been in two times. First, the burial itself in the ground, and then they had been reopened only to take off the, the skull. So it's very interesting, again, a ritual from the, for the skull only. They, they reopened the cave, and the bio, and they take off the skull only. But a but a tooth has been falling during that process. And on the uh, rough part of the screen, you have uh, in Kavze, uh, the the uh, relation with with deer, red deer, and they take only the uh, uh, the antlers of that deer. Again, associated with uh, with human burials. It's very interesting. You always you have the, the part of the body which is the most uh, dangerous, and they take it off and they put in the burial. Uh, either the skull or the animal um, remains. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, we are coming to the point here with the upper paralytic, as we call. In, in Europe, the upper paralytic, you have this origination um, tradition. And also, you have the skull, which is completely different, completely new. Uh, and you have a, 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 a face which is reacted to the, to the real part of the skull, uh, a completely different form. But I do think it's still the same species. It's not the same population, but the same species. And I think this evolution was outside Europe and they came abruptly to Europe uh, with, with this uh, skull, with this anatomical uh, characteristic, but also with the uh, very new and very special technology. As you can see on the left part, it's based on blades, which are uh, removal very long, and I think it's very it's much more easy to uh, put in a handle because at that time the the, the bones uh, and the antlers have been used for uh, for technical purpose, uh, which was not never the case before. So they have a new relationship between humanity and the living world, especially the animals. You can see there is a point in the very part of the. Uh, upper part of the left uh, slide. You, you said that it's very important to have uh, weapons which are made from the animal itself. So, which the Neanderthal would have never dared to, to do so. They, 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 they were weapons were made either by lithics or by uh, uh, wood. But here, you have a completely different relationship between the animal world and humanity. They, they are using the wood, the, the bones for uh, creating bones. And you, you, also, you also have in the lower part, you have the dependents. Uh, again, the, the base pendants are coming from animals, as if the humanity was creating a new relationship with the animal worlds. A relationship of domination, of course, which was never the case during the undertow. 
Very good. So what? The next one. And here's the beginning. I take a comparison with the Indians, American Indians uh, on the left. And you see they have exactly the same kind of shells and, and pendants that we have to the right part. The pendants created from either shells or teeth of animals or created the, the shell themselves uh, a, a new kind of pendant just by bone. This is very important because the relationship between animals and humanity, they, pay, they go for, from animals which are just reserved, limited to a pendant, to define the social position of the, uh, of the body which will the, the pendants. So it's another testimony of the uh, outside uh, of the, the people outside of the animal world. Yes? And of course, you know, there are images, pictures that appear at that time. It's uh, also very important. This is show the case, of course, you know, 30,000 30, years old. And it takes some animals to be represented. So <clears throat> this is on, on the metaphysic point of view, it's important because at that time, there is no uh, 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 horns or antlers but the animals themselves are represented by man. It's not important to have the animal itself, but what is important is the, the picture of animal. So again, this is a, a, a position of human position above the nature. He doesn't care about the animal, but he, he cares about the picture he has himself produced. And it, so it, uh, they choose some species only, and they make picture of it. Yes? Yes. And what is important to my point of view is the pictures of horses. Either on sculpture, you have uh, to the left part in Germany, or on the paintings in a, a Shover cave. It, uh, First, these uh, pictures of, of horses are the most numerous during a paralytic uh, uh, in any kind of, of representation, graving or painting or sculpture. And I think it's important because, uh, to my point of view, the, the, the horses came in, in Western Europe uh, with uh, modern men, with the people moving to the West. And I do think they have, they were mounted animals. Uh, they, so they were using the animals for their movement, the rapid movement. And, and by the way, you know that during Middle Paetic, you have the regional differences. The, 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 the continent is divided by different tradition. But from that time on, during Upper Paetic, the same cultures are exactly the same all across the continent, from the Ural mountains to the Portugal. The, it's probably they, they were looking like uh, for the horses because they, of their uh, rapidity of movement. And, and you, you know, in uh, in Turkey, they also have, in Karain, we find a uh, this origination culture, uh, like in, of course, in Levant, uh, in Caucasus, uh, in, uh, in Iran. Yes? yes I'll take some example to, to show the uh, relationship between the real animal and the pictures to the, to the left. This is Altamira, of course, probably you, you know. And uh, there are, there are there are specific caves with only one single species. We have seen the, the horses, but there are also bison, like, like here in Altama. Mostly, they are not only, but mostly these animals in that cave. As if it was a cave or a or ritual place for this animal. Yes, next one. Yes, this is much more important and much more interesting. Probably you know that in some of these uh, uh, caves with paintings or drawings, you have these animals, an ibex there, and 
uh, bison on the other side a bow and they all have uh, this kind of arrows of, of spears on their body and uh, i think it's very interesting because this is kind of rituals as you know in uh, uh, a, a primitive cultures in salvage countries they do represent the the game before hunting and they, they put arrows or spears on it in order to have a good uh, hunting afterwards it has been described everywhere in the, in the world that it's a, a ritual for the hunting for the success of the hunting as you can see here of course they are not always but there are different arrows because they were different hunters and they all want to to use this ritual for before the hunting oh yes please the uh, next one I make it oh, because I'm a nasty man. <coughs> uh, I make comparisons with the torero in, uh, in Bur, Bur, uh, uh, in Spain now. Uh, of course, you know that this kind of bur is just raised for the game. They are not eaten, they are not like the other bird, but only for the game. Of course, it has a ritual, a very strong ritual uh, purpose in Spain during this bird uh, fighting. But, so I'd make a comparison with the above uh, picture. Probably you know it's from Lascaux in a deep uh, well. Uh, and you see that there is also a bison and a man, a dead man, on the uh, on the soil and uh, as if it was a ritual because of course they were not dead in that place the the world is very small <clears throat> but it's uh, a way of representing a fight between the mankind and the wild beast exactly like in uh, in spain nowadays uh, you see the the, the hunters there in in uh, lasco <laughs> is killed he he lost the fight he, and you, you have all the, the weapons he, he used on the right hand and you can see that his popola no, sorry his popola was a, a bird a bird hat yes here you see the popola is just in the middle of the picture and and the hunters the hunter himself has a bird a bird hand and we can see that the birds is very important in the shamanist uh, rituals. Yes, please, the next one. Oh, yes, but we don't know, of course, about this, this ritual. We don't know a lot. But <clears throat> here in Neo, in the left part of the screen, you, you have uh, teenagers' uh, footprint. And they are fossilized, of course. So it, as if the, the young people had to cross a mysterious cave where, where you, can, you can hardly see, but on the wall there are paintings, as if it was a mythological uh, representation. And the young people had to cross the cave in the deep dark, of course, and just re reveal these pictures on the wall. And I think this is a test of initiation uh, because there are teenagers and uh, it's, it's when there is a change man in the body from the childhood to the adult and, and, and just at this part between two ages they have to be uh, to, to be instructed on the of their mythologies and i better compare though with the uh, pygmies on the right part of the screen when the, this is young lady and she is painted uh, for this ceremony and uh, she has to to be improved by a different kind of uh, a ritual they stay alone in the dark part of the of the forest uh, for a few days so they are, they are feared and they have to be stronger than their fear to in order to become adult so you have this kind of relationship with the with the interpolitic times at the initiation so i mean that the very well known uh, paleolithic uh, ritual art uh, 
basic ritual uh, aspect is not on the purpose of one, but it can be mythological, but it can be initiation or it can be shamanism as well. Yes. Mm. Uh, and that's another aspect, uh, which is dancing, um, like in a ceremony. I take here at the sun ceremony uh, with all these uh, um, pendants, exactly like we have seen in the upper poetic, but also we have in Losel, the left part of the screen, uh, a sculpture uh, of a dancing uh, mound, exactly like they they have different places in the uh, upper poetic of uh, Europe when they show the, the dancing activities, probably during the rituals. Yes, please. Yeah. Of course, you know uh, the shamanic interpretation of these uh, pictures. Uh, I take here to the right uh, uh, drawing of the in the Ariège, the god of the, the cave of the three brothers. <coughs> and you can see that human, of course, uh, with uh, uh, the skin of an um, animal and the antlers of the of the servants uh, under his head. And so it is disguised, it's something between humanity and animality. In, and this is exactly the way the shaman on the left part of the screen, the shaman nowadays again, they have seen there in, uh, in Siberia, they, they, they hide themselves with uh, part of the animal. These are leather, so it's a part of the animal skin, and they also have antlers on their hair. So during the ceremony, they hide themselves uh, in order to keep in touch with the animal world above themselves. So the shaman at that time create relationship with, between the humanity and the spirit of the world. And so, so I think this kind of picture in poetic to the right have exactly the same purpose and the same usage, the same use. So it's one of the uh, goals of uh, poetic art. Mm, yes? I have some water. So this is an engraving on the left part, uh, hatching of a Siberian shaman, uh, still existing nowadays in some parts. And, and you, you can see there is a horse, exactly as we've seen in Paetic, uh, killed, and the dancer, this is shaman, and he, he creates sound with his uh, drum. Uh, and he also wear uh, antlers and he's disgraced uh, by an animal skin. Uh, he's now, he's now entering the world of the spirit. And, and I've seen that, it was very impressive. And, and to the right part, you have a, a stick of a drum this is coming from Paetic, uh, Upper Paetic Cave in northern Spain, La Garma, still uh, on the way of excavation. So it exactly is the same as the drum stick that the uh, shaman in Siberia also wear. And, 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 and you can see that this stick has a nan with a horse, uh, horse head. So it's a clear relationship between the horse and the ritual, either by killing the horse or by uh, creating the sounds uh, of a drum. It's very impressive because it, it, it knocks the drum during hours and hours. So you can you can drink by the by the drug by, by the the sound during the ceremony. Yes. Oh, uh, so. That's another element, another proof of a shamanic, because uh, I told you in the, in the well of, of uh, Lascaux, they have a uh, head as if it was a bird. But you also have the birds here on, on the top of a long uh, wood in the Indian ceremony, American Indian. 
by the shaman also. As you know, the shaman is and the people in America, in Northern America. They are coming from Siberia by the Bering Strait. So it's it's quite normal that we have the same kind of religion behavior on both sides. Okay, but in, in the left part of your screen, you see another, uh, it's a glue, I think, uh, another part of, another example of a bird coming for Hurlfels in southern Germany. And I think it's very interesting, like like the ha the horse uh, sculpture, because it can be a, a part of a message to the natural spirit, as you can see on both sides, Indians or a poetic uh, in Europe. Yes? Uh, Oh, this is a, a little more complicated, as, as you know. So, uh, we have signs, not only pictures, but signs, very mysterious signs. Uh, is it dots like there, or a square or, of a grill, and uh, they are creating uh, mythological uh, um, scenery, and uh, so, most of us think this is a mythology uh, represented by either the animals or the signs. But this is a semiotic extremely difficult to understand. But you, you see there is also a semiotic in, in, in the two ibex uh, there in front because one is black, one is red. And between the two there is a grill um, represented. And, uh, and to the right part, you have a, a deer, a red deer, but only the part, the upper part of the of the body, with another kind of signs, with border squares. So we think it's a, it's like a novel, narrative description of a mythology, because we can find uh, the same kind of relationship in semiotic terms uh, in different places in the. In the upper Baltic uh, of Europe, Western Europe, yes, please. And so, <clears throat> this is very interesting, also, because uh, at the end of upper Baltic, as you know, uh, they introduce a new uh, weapon, which is a bow, uh, arrows and bow, and this is very typical of the uh, new. Um, a forest that invaded uh, Europe at the from cold, uh, show, uh, warmer period. And also the animals are very rapid. Um, they are deer and they are hidden in the forest. So the, the bow and arrow are very uh, well suited for the new environment. I don't mean to say there is no bow before, but at that time they developed a lot. And you know, the, the arrow and and, uh, and bow are very precise and very silent and very long so they keep exactly the animals they want uh, without nobody knows and nobody hear and so i think that's why these bows are considered as a, um, a weapons of the god or as the king because they have a special power Yes, please, the next one. Uh, so you see Shiva, for instance, to the left, uh, we are uh, a bolt as a symbol of his power uh, in India. And this, uh, uh, to the right, is a painted man with uh, arrows, and, uh, arrows and a bow. And this is very late, it's what we call Mesolithic time. Uh, and it's not important to to be Mesolithic, but which is important is they represent themselves at that time. So it's no no more animals, but only human people. And in a natural situation, the hunting or uh, or collecting, this is a completely different world. And um, okay, next one, we'll see more. Yes, uh, not only. Uh, uh, God, but also a king, like here. Uh, he, he's, by the way, he's riding on a horse again. He's wearing the 
the crown, the crown, with uh, the development of the uh, of the upper part looking like a a, a sun, and he of course he is using the bow and arrows, so he's able to go fast with the with the horse and to be uh, dangerous, killing animal uh, by the bows, uh, as you probably know. On the right part of the screen is the time where microlith uh, appears and develops an extremely large uh, ext extension. So, so uh, um, you, we we only have in the, on the field uh, microliths, so very small uh, points, because they they were hafted on a narrow. Um, it's it's a. <laughs> Maybe you can understand what is written in French, but that's exactly what I what I said. Relation with the sun by the crown and with the power by the the weapon. Yes, next one. In, so again, as you know, we we talk about Jim Butters just a few minutes ago, but this is a symbolic of an old old testament we say in christianity uh, when uh, the people are leaving the wild uh, and they became agriculturists so they have to produce their own food by themselves either by agriculture or by, uh, by the crops or or by uh, uh, growing the, the animals this is in the inside the old testament in the bible but it i think it corresponds exactly to a precious patient time when you, the, the people are moving to a completely different world uh, which we call neolithic of course but it just has it has been preceded by the, the mesolithic and by this uh, showing the right part of the uh, of the screen the they are collecting white rice in Africa. So it's just collecting. But as soon as you don't eat all the rice you collect, you put them back in the in the earth. So they're being to crop. And, and so it's the beginning of the domestication of crops at, at by, and this, you know, by the by the rice. So as you as you can guess now. I think Neolithic, just like Mesut, is just a way, a way of uh, of the mind. They they want to change their own situation against the world. And so that's the reason why they change their habit. I don't think it's a question of environment, it's just a question of mind. I, I think it's like a madness. <laughs> the people are always trying to change their relationship more and more. Uh, until we are in actual situation when we cannot change but you but we in a bad situation by our own culture yes next one yes, I, I take a comparison of course you know the crops to the Mm, uh, left part of the street. I think I, I took this picture in, in, in Turkey because in eastern part of Turkey there are still wild crops uh, uh, growing. And the other, on the other side, the, le uh, the right part of the screen, this is Navajo in the uh, southwest United States nowadays. When they take a, a part of the of the grown of, of the, the grains and they give them back to the wind, to the nature, before they eat and before they collect for themselves. And it's very interesting, this kind of relation between the God and the, and the crops. Yes, please, next one. Uh, well, clean to, close to, the, to the end. And uh, that, at that time, exactly like Jim Buddha said, we see the female figure, not only human figures but female mostly or, or exclusively like uh, Botticelli has, has said in uh, during the 16th century when it is uh, the, the birth of Venus of course that uh, goddess of fertility and intelligence and she's coming from the sea as you can see on a shell <laughs> so everything all the symbols are exactly the same the shells the, the water 
and the lady. And, uh, and I took the, in the right part of the screen, uh, oh, just a, a recipient of a vase uh, from Kukuteni civilization mm. in Ukraine. And uh, you see this, this uh, uh, vase is decorated, is painted by a spiral. And spiral suggesting the, the water. Uh, or, or the surface of the water, right here behind the Venus body in, in the rear part. So probably the, wa the water, as we are in a cropped, uh, we are in that agriculturist uh, civilization, the water get importance because it gives the life to, to the earth and then to the, to the society, human society as well. Yes. I don't know if it's the last one or I don't know here. <laughs> it's in your country, dear friends. <laughs> of course, you know Chattanooga. Uh, yes, yeah, clear uh, relation, symbolic uh, relationship between the lady here, that coming from Chattar, both, and and the lady is sitting. She's greasy. Greasy. She's fat uh, because she's pregnant. You see the the the, the infant. The child is coming between her legs, and uh, and she is the two handles that she keeps in her are lions, so on um, panther I don't know, but fillets, and it, so it, all the symbols are there. The, the goddess is a woman, and she procreating. She's giving birth, and she keeps the fillets by the hands. She's stronger than the fillets, meaning stronger than the. At the animal, animal world, yes. Well, there are seven thousand years, probably you know. Yeah, and uh, and the same time in the Near East, in Syria or Palestine, you have always a skull uh, cult with decoration or with shells. This is a uh, uh, from the skull in Syria, Elkom, or um, Hashama, and you, you uh, say, uh, comprise, just, uh, just to comprise it, to the uh, right part of the screen, you have the same kind of habit in uh, Oceania, and uh, with the, uh, the skulls of the deaf people are kept uh, alone, just like in middle party, and they are decorated by the signs that define their own traditions. And you see also the shell in the eyes of the, the body, uh, indicating the, the strong of the eyes, uh, so the eyes of the, also the witness of the intelligence are decorated that, that way. And you see all around the ochre, the red ochre that, that uh, covers uh, the skull. Uh, the, the ochre and the red in general is always a symbol of the, of the life itself. Yes, please. Here you see the in tell us what uh, in, the, in the left part, uh, different kind of skulls, but only the skulls uh, which are kept together in, in a burial. And you can see also that the, 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 the face of the body are recreated is it by a uh, way of clay or by uh, plaster? So he's they are recreating the face of the living people with the uh, with the plaster, but also they give the, the, the sight, the way of the sea with the shells in the boat in both uh, eye. And another important is the right part of the, your screen. There's a mask. Uh, a mask very important in all the rituals in the salvage population, in hunting population, because a mask is a way of representing humanity, but it's it's always the same mask, whatever the human uh, are. So you can change your, your status in such a society just wearing a, a mask. It's, it's, they appear exactly at the same time in the eleven part. Yes? Yes, next one, please. 
<laughs> Maybe there is no more. Uh, there must be another one. Or some others, I don't know. So you can learn a little French by reading <laughs> the word. <laughs> And that's uh, interesting. In uh, this time is in I Iraq, uh, this uh, uh, eagles uh, sculpture of an eagles, and this in Iraq. But on the lower part, of course, you you know this in Chatal Huyu, in painting of the wall, and you see the vulture. Uh, they keep off the head of the people. <laughs> so it's a, a clear relation between the hand and the, the, the vulture that keep them the soul out of the of the body. Um, that it's another. It's also appear in Greek religions. We call them the heart piece to take off the, the to take of, of the body. Uh, I, I do think that this kind of rituals in some Neolithic are at the root of the Greek uh, mythologies and and also the Egyptian mythology, maturely the Greek uh, also see exactly the same. Yes, please. Ah, of course, you know. <laughs> the, uh, yes, <clears throat> this uh, in the east, very east of, uh, of Turkey, and and you know there's a kind of of temple when on stone it's very interesting this is a tenth millennium i have to stress uh, when the tenth mi millennium so well before any neolithic we are in a mesolithic society but you already already have temples with megalith huge stones um, and gubriti tepe of course you know uh, and uh, you see the decoration of one of these slabs to the right, uh, to the right part is uh, again a fillet, like in Chatar Huyuk. And all these games, that all the animals which are represented uh, on, on these pillars, they are all wild game, like the vultures or like, like white boar or, or the fillets. And very interesting because they represent the white uh, animals which are not yet domesticated and by the way we cannot domesticate a ferret and so maybe that's the reason why that it is represented on the temple yeah uh, i take this example uh, to stress the symbolic meaning of a uh, uh, ground uh, axe. You see, the, in the right part of your screen, you have axes, but they are coming from uh, the megalith tombs. You know, the megaliths are huge burials, and the, in the burials are the bodies, of course, but also very uh, elegant uh, axes that never been used. They are just symbolic, and they are very, very rare. Uh, raw material coming from far, um, a few thousand kilometers, and they are very refined, very precisely, and they are given to the body in the megalith as a symbol of their life. So in the left part of the screen, I've shown one of these uh, axes, polished uh, axes, but coming from uh, New Guinea, Papua, and so they are still using this uh, symbol uh, they don't use as an axe, but they use as a symbol of the body, and, and they put they are, it, they are decorated, as you can see, uh, by by fibers, and they are kept below the the bed uh, of the of the body. So I don't mean it's exactly the same, but you can see that uh, investing investment of, of time and uh, elegant in the in the even in the stone axis can be con, uh, considered as an ax, uh, religion uh, action yes uh, another comparison uh, with the greek uh, civilization of course you recognize athena uh, in the old 
uh, in the Soviet, uh, in the upper part of the of the screen. This is a symbol of Athena. Uh, thanks to the to her eyes, she knows, she sees, she understands everything. But so she's trusting the the eyes and the way the intelligence can can uh, uh, observe the, the, the world. But you have this kind of sign exactly the same in the Neolithic of the Balkanist region. Uh, in Hungary or in, in Serbia, you have this Neolithic uh, vase, but they don't, uh, they are not used. They are just decorated by two eyes and put in the burial as such. So the, you have different kind of elements um, coming from the Neolithic to the Greek mythology. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm saying this. <laughs> yes, so to stress the importance of looking, of looking and understanding. So it is really you know, the deep uh, knowledge just like her own. This is in Moravia, Neolithic. Yes. It's another uh, interesting uh, relation. It's, uh, this statuette to the to the left part are uh, clay, terracotta, uh, statuette uh, <clears throat> from Kukuteni civilization. And Gunmanitsa in the west, east part of Europe, and you see they are uh, decorated by signs, and uh, um, we don't know what is significant. It can be a traditional authenticity of, uh, of the sign, but but I find in the <coughs> in the pygmy uh, young lady also with this kind of sign, but this sign is are painted for the initiation. The ritual, it's as if they are designed to be the same uh, representative of their own society by the signs. Yes, please. And of course, I I finished by the uh, this lentil in in the, in the center of Czechoslovakia. It's a five millennium uh, Neolithic. Uh, Neolithic, and you see these big statues are terracotta, so it's a clay, burnt clay of women, and uh, you see the, the head, the, the, her head is also broken, as you also see with the with the terracotta, and the, she opening her arms, and it's exactly like in the Christianity. Um, where the priest opened his arms to uh, for the for the all the humanity, and I think this is uh, what we call a prayer, a prayer. So the, the lady in the left, uh, she opens as if she was addressing her voice to the to the deities uh, in the sky, and this is a. a a way to prove that at that time there are gods and there are religions. So, so we are, we are far from the mythology of the hunters, but you are really in the Neolithic world, world uh, where the people are, have a relation with the gods, which has never appeared before. Yes, please. Well, and you know, you know, just kind of. Uh, Way of life has expanded all across Europe, Central Europe, and of course Turkey at the beginning, Anatolia, I should say, and, and the Balkan, and, and so and so even here where I am, yes, she's there at the very end. <laughs> so we have excavating exactly the same civilization in my own city. <laughs> I did the mindset during the fifth millennium before Christ. Uh, I show that now because not only ex expanded the way of, of living in Neolithic people, but especially because it shows the power of this civilization. Uh, they, they go ac ac across the, any kind of environment, 
and they they conquest any kind of environment because they think the the, the God is there for helping now. So the 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 new way of behavior, instead of all the hunters that stay in their place living in the forest, now the agriculture they go across any kind of environment and they bring the way of life all across. That's what you see in the uh, in the picture below and they destroy the forest and they make uh, agriculture and they make uh, from the forest they're creating their houses well, so for the first time they're changing the, uh, the environment and they impose their way of life not only to the hunters but also to the nature because they have the faith uh, very new yes please uh, I make a comparison uh, with uh, um, uh, dwelling places in Central Africa where they also take off the, the trees all around in order to plant their houses. Um, so they go, it, despite the, uh, the, the forest, they keep the, uh, the landscape and the earth, which never happened before. In nasal tick in any poetic period. So I make a comparison here, there with the discovery of America in the uh, right part of the screen. And you see Christoph Columbus, the first thing he did is to plant the cross, the Holy Cross on the New World in order to make it Christian or to change the status from the wildness to the civilization. And this uh, the, the way he does it is by the Holy Cross, reminding the Christ, of course. So it is so important that they have to change the status of the wide world before before going into it. That's it. that's a neolithic behavior. Yes. Uh, of course, uh, as you know, uh, at the end of the Neolithic, we have this uh, megalith uh, structure. I made a comparison with this signs. Uh, that I find it in, in, in Kazakhstan to the left and to the right is a huge megalith in Bograv in uh, Scotland when you, you see that this standing stone is keeping the, the light of the sun and the light and the heat of the sun in the northern latitude where very few uh, light and a few uh, sun but just for this reason, it keeps uh, this right to give to the earth and to, of course, to human societies around. It's a, it's a logical process. Yes, please. And of course, a bit, as I told you, I'm a nasty man, but I take a picture in Christianity above, and you see that uh, the Christ and her and his mother are. Around it by by the uh, the ray of the sun you know, to, to give them the uh, the face, and you have exactly the same kind of of game with the ray of the sun in uh, in Broda, Broda, in the circle of the megalith in high latitude where they use the the, the sun as a process for engaging the the, the gods uh, in their world. At that time they were gods, but this is a four, fifth million, four, four, four million BC. But Christianity is exactly following the same track. Yes, please. <laughs> and even here, of course, you know Stonehenge to the uh, left part of the screen. It's uh, southern uh, England, where the, this cromlech, as we call, you know, the, uh, the circles. Uh, and mm -hmm. used uh, stones and probably you know that they are oriented in the central part there's a U uh, like this it's oriented to the, the uh, rising sun and the changing of seasons so it's clearly it's a way to calculate where we are uh, in the in the year and see all around there is a circle as we have seen in Ghibli Tepe much earlier 10 million here we are in 4 million and to the right of the 
screen, you see exactly the same. But during the Middle Ages, you see the church in the middle and uh, the different roads are passing there. But uh, all the houses are rounded exactly like in stone hands so in order to keep this, the, the holy part uh, represented by the church in the, in the middle. But, uh, but as the village expanded, they always keep the same structure as a circle, like the sun. Yes, please. Ah, <laughs> maybe I can translate. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. I mean, uh, you really um, literally took us from our first steps as bipedals and uh, you just connected it to the, um, you know, still um, nowadays uh, um, rituals of uh, nowadays mainstream beliefs. Uh, we really thank you for your um, presentation for us. And um, now we're gonna uh, take the questions. Um, so uh, you can just uh, use the uh, hand button behind anyone has a question or you can just type it to the chat and I can. If no one has question, I have a question. <laughs> because, uh, because I, you're I really... have a question too. I have a question too. Right. But firstly, I want to thank uh, to Professor in French. Merci, Professor. I was in Lyon uh, three days before, and I kept some words in my mind. <laughs> I also use teachers. Merci beaucoup. Uh, my question is from very beginning of the presentation. So sorry. Um, it's about cannibalism. Professor, you associated the cannibalism with metaphysics. And uh, I, does that mean the essence of religious thought plus uh, it, can it be provided by, for example, an example of an afterlife? Uh, uh, can we say that this is something uh leads us to do afterlife things for example believing in ancestors like uh in in rituals what do you think about it my yes, question i agree um, <clears throat> but you know that's one point i have to to make before um religion to my point of view is not linked to the death but to the living people to the living so as they always try to keep uh, the life of the, of the new generation uh, by rituals. I've shown some of them, but the cannibalism is very interesting because the, it, it's as if the, the burial of the body is inside us, in, inside the success. So they are continuing their uh, the, the, the life when they before i think yes it's a metaphysical aspect uh, of uh, of cannibalism i have huge i have many books about cannibalism here that i've not written <laughs> but i read and uh, and you you see there are nearly everywhere in the world in the remote places and and this uh, ethnographer uh, show that it is always to maintain the life uh, in, in the same body and to continue like this of course it's a kind of metaphysic but it's not a religion yet okay i will see it so um anyone who has questions All right, <laughs> I think I'm gonna ask uh, with my uh, one of my questions because I have actually more than one. Um, the professor, when when you show that scene to us, the cave painting about you know a bison and a fallen hunter hero, uh, I call it hero. Probably he's uh, it's an important scene because it's recorded, it's cave painted, and uh, his hands were uh, like you know birds. And then you mentioned. Uh, the um, you know the vultures flying over headless corpse and carrying the hats to somewhere else. So, do you think that the idea of after you know after the death uh, there is something like some essence, maybe call it spirit, a soul or mind, I don't know, goes to sky and 
it's but do you think that it's a representation of this and do you think that this thought is really um that you know that old actually yes. what mm -hmm. yes i just think it's the same because you know in the hundred society so mostly when they are so old about 40 10 years uh, we see the the essence the, the origin of the thinking but after they are uh, recorded in text but of course much much later than the uh, behavior itself uh, and i think when you consider the poetic time you have all the elements for thinking for understanding the nowadays uh, religions because nowadays you have everything written but you don't have explanation we in poetic uh, a politician we, we can understand this much and then explain the nowadays uh, religion uh, oh yes about the skulls i think uh, this is exactly, exactly what you say the, the symbol of course uh, of a vulture taken off the head meaning the the personality of a, a person take it off to the sky Yes, it's uh, exactly that. Of course, it's symbolic, but uh, it's just a picture. But it, it's the same aim, it's the same goal that uh, we have in Christianity or in any kind of religion. It's only the soul that goes to this, to this guy, not the body. And the soul is contained by the brain, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems that it seems that um, humans. I I will call them humans. Like I think the. Um, uh, it's also your th uh, th uh, thought that the Neanderthals and the we are not we are the like we are humans we are the hominids and we are not that um, different. So they make these connections between the body parts. Like okay, this is the head and this things and therefore this is who actually we are or the essence lives in there. And um, I think it's common between us the Homo sapiens sapiens now. And you know the bearers of the origination culture. I think it was it belonged to the origination culture. The, um, yes, so, yeah. yes, our relationship, of course, is because as you say, the same species. But what is very interesting, very intriguing, is that there is a process, not only in the religion, but also in the technical behavior, in dwelling, in hunting behavior. There is a process which is organized around time uh, di time development so there is also, also a logic process however uh, you have to consider that the neanderthal behavior has stayed nearly the same during few hundreds thousand years so and you can see that modern human is disappearing slowly uh, so I think there is, although there is same similarities between the two populations, modern and Neanderthal, they are really uh, engaged in a historical process with the same ability in their mind and their, their same needs, but they are building other relationship, either with themselves or with the nature. And this is historical process. It's not based on biology at all. Mm -hmm. Because you, just to have an example, uh, besides us, you, you all know that uh, pictures, such so important for me, are appearing everywhere in the world. So that's inside the mind of the people. It's not a conquest by modern, modern human. They are just inventing new things because they are the same people, the same species. So at the same level of, of evolution, the evolution of the mind. Not exactly if you compare what we think during the 18th century of the Christ and what we think today, the body is not changed, but the history has changed a lot. So I think it's it's only history. But when I say that, I cannot explain what is his story. Why is it changing? But we, we it's like a disease. We are changing always. Whatever we know, whatever we have done, we have to change again. This is this is human condition. Yes. Uh, 
any more questions from anyone? Because I have one too, if you, if you don't mind, Professor. It's but uh, that's, that the bison scene really, um, you know, one can make so many connections if you think about the, you know, mythology, like the Greek mythology you talked about. Um, that reminds me, the, you know, the story of Minotauros, you know, Minos, Knossos, the Cretan exactly. civilization. And the many people were, uh, I think it's a very, uh, you know, widespread thought that uh, this bull imagery of the Cretes, of the Knossos, uh, this comes because of the domestication of the cattle. Mm -hmm. But what you showed us as a scene, and if it is a scene that is painted in a cave wall, so that means that it is important. Yeah. Um, and this imagery actually comes from our hunter-gatherer types, like the relation between the bull, the symbolism of bull, comes before the domestication of cattle. But yeah. during the times that we were actually chasing them, just like the horses that you mentioned. So um, it's it really looks like a, there is a, there is a cultural continuation like uh, there. Do you find any uh, other examples like that? <laughs> I've shown some, <laughs> but I, mm, I think you have to go over the example and look at the structure. But you have tackled it exactly because we in the Egyptian mythology, by the way, mm -hmm. by example, I, I love this mythology because it's already half animal, half human, yeah, uh, and 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 they are, however, in an agricultural society, however, but the animal. Is represented as wild <laughs> and not as domestic, no mystic. So I think there is a clear relation, clearly relation between the status of, of animal as wild, dangerous, and, uh, and, and that's why this is why the thing is important. This is why they are represented in order to have the, the power on them by the images. See? Uh, but of course, your idea has to be thought more, <laughs> uh, and I will. Yeah, I, I, I think the uh, foundings in Göbek de Tepe also uh, support um, these theses because uh, also the uh, animals that we see in Göbek de Tepe, as you mentioned, they are not domesticable uh, animals. There are snakes and foxes and various kind of wild animals, but they are there in a most probably in a sacred place. Yeah. Yes. That raven, for instance, or Oh, yes. The so, uh, I think I think we don't have um, more questions uh, right now, Professor. It's uh, you covered really a um, long uh, eras of you know um, human history, and we are really thankful for your presentation tonight. I personally um, greatly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, thanks so much. Do you have any last words? <laughs> Yes, what I think is that the only thing is important that any kind of behavior in humanity has to be reported, of course, like in Chatar, but has to be mostly understood. You have to give an explanation, the reason why this is behaving like that. That's our duty. We are not just collecting data and and, and it's over. No, we have to give an explanation. And my point of view is that humanity, e even today, uh, is the same. As I said, the history is changing, but not the humanity. Uh, so when you are engaged in a situation, historical situation, you want to change it, but you don't change yourself. And, and let's go. And last thing to, to be mentioned is that uh, I have. I read, I love anthropology, I mean, cultural anthropology. And you can read Claude Levi Strauss, for instance, or Mircea Eliade, or Ernest Cazira. Okay, they are contemporaneous, but, but what they have found on the ex exotic uh, population can be applied exactly to to, it is to our to politic population or neolithic and so on because the, the anthropology is, is always coherent Levi Strauss say structural it is said it it has a meaning so we have, of course we will never find the last word 
but at least we have to try to give an explanation by comparison with nowadays people and so on by thinking. But, but I would like to to have address email addresses so that we can keep in touch. You know? Oh yes, of course. course. We we will be honored, really. Yeah. Of course. Probably you have mine already. Sorry. Yes, we got your email, Professor. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can write me a few words. Uh, so uh, and we would like to. We would love to see you in Istanbul, and we'd love to host <laughs> you in Istanbul. Why yes, not? Yes. Next okay. time. I love the city. Uh, I've been there several times. But then I'm mean, excavating to the very east. But I, prefer, I love Istanbul, of course. Oh, it's, a, it's a great city with very intellectual and very different kind of. I love Omar Pamuk. <laughs> uh, I read you. all his, his books. And, uh, you know, uh, Turkey for me is my second uh, country. I love, to, uh, and I will be there, by the way, uh, uh, again in uh, in this summer, not for working, just for see my friends. <laughs> so Sorry. maybe we can see you at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why not? Okay. Be yeah. great. Uh, I can work in, in the region of Karaman. But of course, I can land in Istanbul first. <laughs> Up to you. Yeah, yeah, that would be really great. I mean, that would be more than I um, actually, you know, dreamt for. But uh, that would be really great. I think we should really keep in contact. Okay. Up to you. <laughs> thank, thank, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, uh, it was a pleasure for us. So, um, see you next time. Yes. Uh, hoping. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.